Uh, for more, let's go to Washington. Ali Vaez is project director for Iran at uh, International Crisis Group. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. My pleasure. Are you surprised by, by this attack? Well, the attack in Pakistan is quite unprecedented, uh, and it's quite reckless. Um, Iran has good relations with Pakistan. They have uh, common enemies in the form of some of these uh, jihadi groups, and they could have coordinated this with, uh, with the Pakistanis, as they have had in the past. And also remember, Pakistan is a nuclear power, uh, and in the middle of the tensions that uh, Iran is, uh, is dealing with uh, because of the, Ga uh, the, the Gaza war, uh, this was a particularly provocative uh, act to engage in. Yeah, they seem to be taking on all comers, those strikes coming the same day as the ones that targeted Iraqi Kurdistan. Uh, absolutely. I think Iran is trying to uh, flex its military muscle because it feels uh, particularly vulnerable. Uh, it has been on the receiving end of U.S. and Israeli actions in the past few weeks. There was a senior uh, IRGC, Revolutionary Guards commander, who was killed by Israel in uh, southern Syria. Uh, uh, Hezbollah commanders and uh, Shia militia commanders uh, uh, allied with Iran have also been uh, killed uh, by the U.S. Or, uh, or Israel. And of course, the U.S. has also bombed Yemen because of what the Houthis have done uh, in the Red Sea. Uh, Iran itself has been uh, subject to cyber attacks, uh, to twin suicide bombings in the city of Kerman. Uh, and so I think it felt that it's in a position of weakness and it needed to do something. But what it has done is really reckless because it has uh, targeted three uh, of its neighboring countries to the west and to the east with whom it actually has a good relationship. Uh, and it's also feckless uh, because uh, it's not uh, going after uh, its real adversaries in the region, uh, which are the U.S. and Israel. So, so what's it all about in, in in this case? Particularly, you mentioned the the uh, the big suicide attack that took place in Kerman that's been claimed by ISIS. Uh, is it about that? Is it about what happened at the the the, the killing of uh, uh, police officers in uh, Sistan Baluchistan province? What's it about? I think it's again, it's primarily about trying to signal that they're not in a position of weakness, but uh, but they're not going after the real perpetrators here. Uh, Iran has blamed the attack in Kerman, for instance, on uh, the ISIS uh, of Khorasan province, which is based in Afghanistan. But uh, they don't want to open a new front against the Taliban, so they have not taken any action in Afghanistan. Or they have also blamed uh, that ISIS was working in conjunction with Israel and the U.S., but they have not. Uh, responded against uh, uh, Israel or the U.S. What they wanted to do was to take action so that it's a demonstration of force uh, flexing their military muscle without necessarily provoking any kind of escalation uh, with the U.S. and Israel that would uh, result in the expansion of the war in Gaza. So this is how they have squared the circle. Uh, but again, I think it's both reckless and feckless. Ali Vaez, the, the picture you're painting is one uh, of an Iran that's on the back foot. Uh, what we're seeing a lot of in the past days is an Iran pulling all the strings, uh, what with uh, uh, letting the Houthis uh, be the ones to uh, engage with the United States in the Red Sea, uh, Hezbollah be, and, and Hamas being the ones who are uh, fighting directly with Israel. Which is it? Well, I, I think it's actually the, on the on the surface it appears that Iran is ten feet tall, but uh, in practice, what Iran has done since October seventh uh, signals a high degree of uh, restraint and reluctance to enter into the fray or sacrifice any of its key assets uh, in support of Hamas or the people of Gaza uh, or anything short of defense of its own homeland. Uh, and so, for that reason, I think overall, although Iran has uh, impressive uh, deterrence capabilities in the form of all of these groups uh, that could project power all the way from uh, the Indian Ocean uh, to the Red Sea and the Mediterranean. Uh, but uh, in practice, they are reluctant uh, to use uh, those capabilities. Uh, uh, remember that the Houthis uh, are actually not a proxy of Iran and have a long track record of ignoring Iranian advice. And they have been the one who have taken the biggest risks. But when it gets to Iran itself, and Hezbollah, they have acted with a high degree of cautiousness, which I think overall has diminished the credibility of the deterrence.
So what you're saying is that standoff between the Houthis and the United States is a little bit autonomous of what Iran is doing elsewhere. That is correct. Uh, the Houthis uh, are fiercely independent, uh, and uh, they actually uh, are doing this uh, primarily based on their own uh, internal calculations. Uh, it, it is true that Iran has is complicit in the sense that it has provided them with capabilities uh, that they are now using, uh, but it's not at all that they're acting on Iranian orders. So this chance of uh, the kind of risk of a situation where the United States finds itself in direct confrontation uh, with Iran, uh, how high is it? Well, uh, it's, it's getting higher by the day because although, as I said, the Houthis are not proxies of Iran, but they might uh, engage in the kind of activity, especially if it results in uh, fatalities, uh, U.S. Uh, or Western fatalities, uh, by targeting vessels in the Red Sea uh, or the Gulf of Aden, uh, that Iran might end up actually paying the price for. And there are also, you know, the complexity of this situation is that we're talking about a very wide geographic zone with a, a high number of non-state actors in it with different degrees of coordination with Iran. And so it's quite possible that one of these groups would take the kind of action uh, that would put Iran and the U.S. Uh, in a direct confrontation, despite the fact that neither side has any desire for it. If you're Joe Biden right now, are you more worried about direct confrontation with Russia or with Iran? Well, I think the risk of direct confrontation with Iran is higher right now because of the degree of friction. Uh, you know, we're talking about, uh, uh, again, a very wide uh, area uh, uh, through which uh, a lot of black swans uh, could emerge. Uh, with Russia, also remember that uh, the U.S. has uh, diplomatic relations. With Iran, uh, uh, the, the, the messages usually have to go through intermediaries, uh, and we're talking about a very emotional and very tense uh, situation. So I think there is a much bigger uh, risk of miscalculation uh, or mistakes uh, that would result in uh, uncontrolled escalation. Ali Vaez, before we let you go, after this um, uh, recall of, uh, 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 of uh, uh, ambassadors uh, when it comes to between Pakistan and Iran there, one of the diplomatic reactions coming from China calling on both sides uh, to essentially cool it. Um, China, which has good relations uh, uh, with both. What's your prediction as to what happens next? Well, China has tremendous leverage. Uh, there's no doubt about it. The question is always whether uh, China is willing to deploy its leverage to rein in uh, Iran or uh, Iranian allies like the Houthis who have uh, targeting uh, international shipping, uh, by which China is also uh, indirectly affected. Um, but, uh, but I think uh, neither Pakistan uh, nor Iraq are in a situation or have desire to uh, continue uh, to uh, either strain their relations with Iran or see further escalation of tensions with Iran. And so I think both sides would try to bring down the temperature. Uh, and Iran, uh, uh, probably thinking that it has already uh, demonstrated uh, its capabilities, uh, would no longer see the need to continue with this kind of activity. Ali Vaez, I want to thank you so much for joining us from Washington. Thank you.